Welcome to today's video. In today's video we're going to be talking about calling functions. So we'll be looking at two primary instructions today, uh, the call instruction and the return instruction, and then we'll also be focusing on how does that work and what in particular happens to the stack in order that we can keep track of the execution flow of the program. So um, what we'll find is that with the call instruction um, that we use the call instruction to call a function. When we say call and then a function name what that is essentially doing is it's, it's placing into EIP the address of wherever that function is defined at. And we'll see that in assembly, we're essentially defining functions as labels. We're just, we're just having a place um, in which our instruction pointer can go to to begin executing instructions. Uh, what's important to understand here is that before EIP goes to that address, what we're going to do, or what it, this instruction will do, is it pushes the return address of the next instruction onto the stack. So a call instruction modifies the stack. If you recall when we talk about our pointers, and particularly when we started talking about the stack, we have ESP. Um, ESP is our stack pointer. And so if we modify by pushing a value onto the stack, we're also modifying where our stack pointer points to because pushing something onto the stack will grow the stack by four bytes, right? Because we're on a 32-bit system. So ESP will now point to a slightly different location. Um, from there, then, it jumps to the address of the function. So EIP is set to the, the function of uh, the address of that function. Okay, uh, once we go there, EIP begins to execute instructions sequentially, and um, we will more than likely at some point in time hit uh, the return instruction. And so that'll be one of the things that differentiates our labels is that when we define a function, we have the label that, that is the beginning instruction for that function as well as it will it will end with a return instruction. So we'll return or ret from a function. Um, so what this will do then is it will pop the address that's on top of the stack into EIP and then EIP will go to that address. And so if we call a function and we push the next address onto the stack, then when we're done with that function and return pops that address off of the stack and moves that into AAP, that's how we know, that's how a program knows that once it's done with a function call, it knows exactly where to return. Okay, so let's take a look at this simple example. We'll have uh, a call to clear EAX. This is a function or a label. You can see that's defined later down here. And then a return. This just returns from the main function. So this, this would be like execute, uh, exiting the function or the program basically. So that when we call this though, when we call clear EAX, we have to know where to go. Um, so we have to know where to go, but more importantly, we have to know where to return. And so this address for the next instruction, when we call clear EAX, we, we push this address onto the stack. Now we move this address from clear EAX into EIP and we go to that location. Okay, so here's clear EAX, this is that address. We move into EAX zero and now we encounter the return instruction. So return pops what was on top of the stack off and moves that into EIP. So now EIP knows to go back to this line right here. Okay, so let's try to, I'm gonna try to diagram that out here. Okay, so here I'll draw our stack. Okay, we're primarily focused on two of our registers right now, ESP and EIP. Okay, and right now ESP is pointing to some location we don't necessarily care about because we haven't quite yet started executing our user code, which is all of this over here. Okay, let's say that EIP is now pointing to call EAX and we're about to execute that instruction. So you can see off to the side, these aren't necessarily accurate. I just try to make addresses here so that they would, hopefully they help make sense as to what's going on with this program. So um, our return, let's say that that's at address 14 hex. So if we call clear EAX, then we push the next address onto the stack. So that's gonna push onto our stack 14 hex, which is our address. Right, so I'll just annotate that off to the side here. That's our address. And now ESP is going to point here because whenever we modify the stack, we change where ESP points to. So now it's pointing here. Um, once we do that, now we move into EIP wherever this address is. 
And what will happen when you compile the program is this won't say call clear EAX. This will probably say something like call and then the actual offset in the file. So call 18 hex because that's the address for this function. This label and this first instruction are going to be the same memory address. Okay, so now we've pushed the address onto the stack and now we move that location into EIP. So now EIP is going to point down here. It's going to execute this instruction, so it moves 0 into EAX, that does not modify the stack. We execute the next instruction. Okay, now this will because we're returning. So RET will pop the value off the top of the stack. ESP is pointing to this address because that was the last thing that we pushed onto the stack. So we're going to pop this value into EIP, which is our return address right here. So we pop that value into EIP. We've now popped ESP. So ESP is now pointing back to where it originally was. And EIP now will go to that instruction. So it'll now go back to this instruction here. It knows the return address. Okay. This value we popped off of the top of the stack. So ESP now points back to its previous location. This value still remains on the stack. We're just no longer referencing it. So I guess just a little something to keep in mind there. Okay, and that's how it works. So the call and the return, that's what we're doing with the stack. Now, we're gonna talk about in a future lecture here, EBP and arguments. And it's gonna be why it's important to understand that when you modify the stack, if you push, you have to pop. If you push, you have to subtract. Because if we get these return addresses messed up, so that when we do a return and we don't have an address on top of the stack when we return, um, then we'll, we won't have a valid address to return to, and that'll cause our errors in our program. Okay, let's see here. I've got this in a program that we can take a look at. Okay, so here we can see um, first run through. We're just going to move into EAX um, all Fs, which in two's complement would be negative one, and then we'll call clear AX. We'll see that the program will, will function just fine. It'll run, it'll call that, that, uh, that function, it'll exit normally, there'll be no segmentation faults. We'll dump the register before the function call, and then we'll dump the register after the function call just to see that EAX was in fact cleared out. Okay, so here we can see EAX was all Fs, and now EAX is all zeros. So everything appeared to work just fine. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and comment those dump regs out and run it again. You'll see no change because I'm not producing any output. Uh, what we're going to do though, at least what I'm going to try to do here, is uh, use GDB. So we've talked a little bit about GDB. GDB is a, a debugger um, that you can use on DS Unix. And what we can do is we can run our program using GDB. So we can say GDB and then the name of our executable. So video 21.out for my example here. Okay, once GDB loads, we'll want to set a breakpoint. So in this case, I can say break at ASM main. Okay, so now we have a breakpoint set and you can see that it set that breakpoint at an address. So that's the address for ASM main in this program. Now what I can do is I can type in R and that'll run the program, that'll execute the program until it hits that breakpoint. So you can see here that breakpoint one was hit. Um, disassemble, that disassembles the program, and you'll see the assembly for my program. So Fs into EAX, move into EAX all Fs, call clear EAX. So move all Fs into EAX, and then call clear EAX. All right, so um, there's two instructions now to get things moving. So SI is a single step, and it will step into a function. And ni is the next instruction, and that will step over a function call. So if you get to, let's say we get to call clear EAX, if I don't want to go into that function call, I do ni. Um, if I want to, then I'll do si. And in this case today, we'll actually go inside of it. Okay, so si, and you see we've moved now to the next instruction. So this little arrow was indicating that we were at the instruction push a, and now we've just moved to move into EAX uh, EAX, 0x, and all those Fs. Okay, we have a couple other commands. Uh, info registers EIP, right, and that's going to show us what EIP is, what's in that register. So 80484C5 
And we know that by looking at this disassembly, that this is currently where EIP is pointing to. Right, right here, 804A4C5. Okay, so that matches up. Um, we also have the X command, which examines memory. And so if you do X slash X, that'll say examine memory and present that, whatever's at that location in a hexadecimal format. So if I say X slash X dollar ESP, that'll show me what's on top of the stack. In this case, it's all zeros. And we haven't done anything to modify the stack. So really, at this point, we don't care what that value means. Okay, so um, we'll go to the next instruction. We can see that we're about to call clear EAX. And if we take a look at ESP, still the same value. Um, if I do an SI now, we're now inside of that function, clear EAX, right? Because we're at the instruction for move zero into EAX. If we look at ESP, we can see that ESP is no longer zero. It's 80484C4, uh, right? And if we look up here, 80484C4 was our next address. So this is our return address because when we called this function, we push that next address onto the top of the stack, right? We look at EIP, EIP, pointing to move EAX. Okay, now we're at the return. We can dump EIP, we're right there. We can also take a look at ESP, and we can see that ESP still has that return address on top of the stack. Next instruction, though, is going to be the return instruction. So after we do that, you can see that we're back in the main, right? We went to that address that was on top of the stack, which in this case is our pop A. We can take a look at what's on ESP or what's the top of the stack pointing to, back to zero. And we can see, of course, that EIP is pointing to 80484CF, which was the return address. Right? So we can use GDB to kind of help us trace through that program. All right, so for the next example, then um, we're going to talk about this for a couple of reasons. One is so that we can start uh, working with pushes and pops, because when we talk about EBP and passing arguments to functions, this is going to be more important to understand the, the push and pop and how we can um, you know, essentially pass that those values as arguments to a function, um, as well as what happens if we, if we mess it up. All right, so with this example, um, we're going to push a value on right here, then we'll call our function, then we'll pop a value, then we'll return. Other than that, everything else is the same. All right, so let's just kind of step through this as we did previous. Okay, there's our stack. There's ESP, and there's EIP. Okay, so right now, ESP is pointing somewhere, we don't care. EIP is going to point right here. Okay, so we're going to push a D word 0FH on. Okay, so that adjusts ESP because we're pushing data onto the stack. So in this case, we're just pushing that value. So now ESP points here. Okay, next, execute the next instruction. That's our call instruction. All right, so just as the previous one, we will push on the return address. So I'll just put an A on the side here so that I can remember that that's our address. The next address in my example here, I just made that 18 in hex. Okay, so we push that value on, ESP now points here, and we go to that location. So ESP is now in this function. Okay, uh, move EAX into zero, no problems there. And now we get to ret. So at this point in time, what's on top of the stack? Because it's important because whatever's on top of the stack is where we're going to return to. Well, the return address is on top of the stack. So we'll move that value into EIP, and then EIP will go there, right? So that's this address right here. Okay, return moves and pops. So that takes ESP. Bam, let's go with a different color here, maybe. Maybe. So now ESP is pointing back to this value, okay, 
now we pop EAX. So when we pop, we pop that value. So it's it's we move the value on top of the stack into this register. All right. So now we've popped 0FH or so 0F hex into EAX. When we pop, that adjusts our stack pointer. All right. So that's pointing back to where it originally was. And now we return. And so what we have to assume was that this location was the return address for um, this call and domain. So this needs to be an address so that when this exits, then it has an address to go to to terminate the program. Right? This pop into EAX, we're just telling it to take that value from the top of the stack and move it into that register. Right? This has nothing to do with you know, how any of the data got there. Pop takes the value at the top of the stack, and then this it moves it into whatever location you define here. All right, so let's take that same example, but let's uh, essentially break something in it. And that is what we're go not going to do is we're not going to do this pop right here, okay? So I'll draw the stack again. SP, EIP, whoops. We got a little out of control. All right, so ESP is pointing up here. We hope to be a return address. EIP is pointing here. Okay, so very similar to last time, we're gonna first push this value. So F hex, all right? That's gonna change where ESP points because now it's gonna make the point there. EIP moves to the next instruction. That's a call instruction. So now we're going to push on an address and that's going to be, the return address will be 18. Okay, and then EIP is gonna to go to that location. So there's our clear EAX, so we'll move into EAX zero. And now here will be return. Okay, so far so good, because we're about to pop off the top of the stack our return address, and this is the return address. So we pop that off the top of the stack. I forgot to update ESP was pointing there. So now I'll make this into red, this return flow. Okay, so now we, we pop this off the top of the stack. So we move this value, 18, into EIP, and then that changes. So now ESP is pointing back to this location. All right, EIP is now pointing into here. We're not popping though, we forgot that. And now we're gonna return from our main function. All right, and this is where the problem is, because where does ESP point at this point in time? Well, this value here, which is supposed to be F, right? We pushed this value on earlier. So um, we're now going to return, our stack pointer is pointing in the wrong location. So we're gonna return, so we're gonna pop this value off the top of the stack. EIP is going to point to wherever this address is, zero of hex. And we're likely, because that's gonna be an invalid address, uh, we're likely gonna get a segmentation fault or the program will crash. Right, and so that's why when we talk about pushing and popping or pushing and subtracting, that's why we need to keep these coordinated because if we didn't, then this type of thing can happen and this is what causes our program to crash. We return by popping off the what should have been an address, in this case it wasn't, and then we try to return to that. We move that value into EIP, which causes the program to crash. Okay, so we can walk through this example just to see. Okay, so there's the push and the pop. Everything else is the same. And there we go. I guess nothing happens, right? Um, so everything worked out. Oops, everything worked out okay. Uh, if I comment out the pop EAX though, and I go to run this program, you can see there's that segmentation fault. All right, we messed up our stack pointer. We didn't have the proper return address when this went to exit from main, uh, our ASM main, and it caused a seg fault. All right, so when you start seeing those seg faults, likely uh, it's, it has to deal with an, where you're trying to tell the program to go and execute instructions. Okay, let's see. Uh, another example here, this is just a simple example. I have this variable A hello world with a new line and then a null termination. Okay, and we have call print hello. So um, we can, because if, if this function, you can see call print hello, 
uh, is just calling print string. This print string we know will be looking for the string to print. The address is supposed to be in EAX. So if we move into EAX and then call print hello, that will go to this function. It will call print string and then it will return. All right, so we can run that and we can see that that'll print hello world and access the program normally. Okay, there's no problems. Um, we'll talk a little bit about calling conventions later on. And so there are a, a couple of, of primary ways in which we pass data to functions. One way is through registers, another way is through the stack. And we'll be talking mainly about the stack right now, uh, but you, you can really use either way, or depending on the programming that you're doing, the, the program itself, you know, if you're doing Windows programming, it'll define, the function itself will define the calling convention that it'll, that it'll use. Uh, more to come on those for sure. Okay, here's an example. Well, I won't go through this in code, but you can see here that uh, let's say that we have a function called sum registers, and it's moving. So we've moved um, data into all the general purpose registers, and then in this function, we're just adding those all together. So add eax, ebx, add eax, ecx, edx, esi, edi. Um, all the values are being stored in EAX because EAX, as we talked about at the beginning of the semester, EAX is our accumulator register. And so there's some techniques, again, we'll talk about in a little bit, that when we, um, if we're going to use a register in our function, we'll oftentimes save that register, use it in our function, and then restore it right before we're done, right before we return. EAX is kind of an exception to that rule. And then it's just generally assumed for most functions, if they're going to return a value, they're going to return it in EAX. So if you call a function, and before you call it, you need something, a value that you have in the EAX register, you might want to save it before you call it. All right? And this is an example of doing that, that the sum of all of those is just being stored in EAX. And then when this returns, wherever this was called in that original program, wherever it, you know, from that function it was called, then it can get the sum by referencing the register EAX. Okay, let's see here, and I'm going to try to just do this on this sheet right here. So the last example that we'll go through, and I just want to try to diagram this out. It's a little clutter here, so hopefully this, this will work, um, is just to look at a recursive example. So we have with this example, okay, this is our general template that we've been using. Um, we have really these, these two instructions right here. Uh, we're going to move into EBX a value of 3, and then we're going to call recursive fun or rec fun, which is down here. And this value of this register will determine how many times we're going to call this function. All right, so I'm going to draw our stack again, and we're going to try to trace through this just like we did previously. Okay, here's ESP. an EIP and we'll say ESP points somewhere. Okay, um, EBX, just to try to save a little bit of space, I'll also keep track of EBX for us and we'll say that that is now equal to three. So if EIP, and I probably won't draw arrows to everything, otherwise we'll get really cluttered down here. Um, but what, I, what we're trying to look at, or what really the point of this example, is to just see what happens on the stack, especially with the recursive function, because it's the stack-based um, function calls that allow a recursive function to work. So we move into EBX3 and then we call recursive fun. So what we're going to do is we're going to now push on top of the stack and adjust our stack pointer the next instruction. So this is our next instruction right here. So I'm just going to write down pop A. Okay, and now ESP points to that location. We're going to go to now EIP is going to go to rec fun. So we're going to move instruction pointer down here. Uh, we're going to push EBX. Okay, so we're going to push the value of EBX onto the stack. So in this case, that's three, right? Because at this time, the value in EBX is three. And then we're going to compare EBX to zero. Uh, EBX is not zero. So this is our condition. This is what we're going to check for every iteration, essentially of this is like a loop, but we're doing it with recursive function calls. So we compare bx to zero. If it's zero, we'll jump to done. And done will print off a value and then return. So this is how we're going to get out of this function. Um, if it's not zero, then we're going to decrement ebx, and then we're going to call recursive fun again, or the recursive function again. All right, so uh, we compare ebx to zero, and then we jump of zero. So we have to do a comparison before we do a jump instruction. Uh, jump in zero 
would it would only take the jump if ebx is zero, right? Because zero minus zero, if the two values were the same, they'd be zero. Um, in this case, ebx is three, so they're not going to be zero. So we're going to decrement ebx. Okay, so that'll give us a value of two. And now we're going to call recursive function again. Okay, but this time the return address is for the next instruction, which is this label done, right? Label done and this first instruction, these are the same thing. So we call and we push that value on. So now we're gonna modify the stack again. And I'm just gonna put, instead of our return address, I'm just gonna put the label done. Okay, now ESP is pointing to here. Okay, now we call recursive funds. So we go back to this location right because that's our function uh, we push ebx right, so now we push ebx onto the stack ebx is now two and we compare ebx to zero right same thing but it's not so we'll decrement again that's a value of one and we call recursive fun so we call we're going to push the return address on which is done and we're going to jump to recursive fun we push ebx again so we need a larger stack. EBX is equal to one. Okay, and of course our stack pointer is keeping up. Um, compare, still not there. So now we'll decrement. EBX is now zero, but we have to call recursive fun again. Okay, so now we're gonna push that return address onto the stack, which is done. Of course, all of these are addresses here as we go. Okay, and now we move EIP to recursive fun. We push EBX, which is now zero. And now we compare EBX to zero. So compare zero to zero, that will be zero. So now we have a jump of zero to done. So now we move to done. Okay, so um, we're in done. We move EAX um, into EAX, ESP plus four. All right, and we got to, let me just move ESP down here. Okay, so if ESP is pointing here, ESP plus four would be this location, right? So we can make or calculate relative offsets from those pointers by doing that addition. Okay, so we're pushing um, into, so we're gonna move that value into EAX. That's this address, and then we're gonna push EAX. And what we're getting to set up to do right here is to call printf, which we've talked about before. If you look at the, the format specifier here, right um, we're pushing address percent %x to call percent %d so we're going to print percent %x is the format specifier to print the hexadecimal value and we'll see this when we run the program so we're going to we're going to print that and then we're going to print percent %d um, and then uh, we'll do that with each with each return from that recursive function call okay so that moves the address and then we push EAX, so that pushes that onto the stack. Okay, so let's go ahead, I'm gonna change colors here. So we're gonna push that, um, push EAX onto the stack. So we're gonna push onto the stack, what is essentially that address again. Okay, then we're gonna move format into ECX. Right, which is this guy right here. Right, so now we're gonna push that onto the stack. Oops, what happened? I don't know. Okay, so that's our format. All right, so that gets us right to you here. And then we're gonna call printf. All right, and so uh, what we're getting set up to do if you think about it, I should have typed this out instead of trying to write it, but here's our call to printf. Come on now. And then here's our format specifier. Okay, I give up. Uh, anyways, it's the format specifier, and then it's the value for percent %x, and then it's the value for uh, percent %d. And if you look at the stack, we have our format specifier our address for percent %x, and we have the value for the percent %d. So we have everything on the stack the way that we want it. Um, we'll call it printf, so that'll print it off to standard out. So we'll see this, make that, print that output when we run the program. 
And then when we're done, we're going to add to ESP, right? And so really what we had up here is this push was setting up the stack for these calls to printf. So since we pushed three times, push, 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 we have to either pop three times or we have to subtract from ESP um, the same amount of pushes. Now, remember when we push in a 32-bit environment here, when we push onto the stack, we're pushing in four bytes. So if we push four times, four plus eight plus C, so we'd have 12 bytes. So that's why we'd add to ESP zero C. So after that function, so we call the function, it pushes the return address on the stack, it returns, so it pops the return address off the stack. So when we get back to this instruction right here, ESP is pointing this location, then we're going to add to ESP 12 bytes. Let's see here if I can get a good color. Purple. Right, so what's that going to do? Well, that's going to take ESP, and now it's going to be pointing right here, right? Because we're going to move it up 12 bytes, so now we're going to be pointing to this address. Um, now we're going to return. So what, what's important to have on top of the stack when we return? An address, right? The address where we're going to return to. Remember, this is a recursive function call. So right now, um, we're going to return to essentially uh, kind of unwind those recursive calls. So we return, so now we pop this address off the top of the stack, move that into EIP, that brings us back to done, and ESP is now pointing to this value. Okay, and then we'll go through that same process again, where we'll push the address, um, we'll push the format specifier, we'll call, and then once we call the printf and return, our stack will be adjusted to here. Then we return again, return back to the done label. All right, so now ESP will be pointing here, and then we'll do that again. We'll push the return address on, we'll push uh, the format specifier on, we'll call printf, we'll return and adjust the stack pointer, which is our add ESP, um, and then we'll return. All right, and then we'll finally get to the last one, because we have to get back to here at some point, otherwise we'll never, ex you know, we'll never exit the program. So we'll finally get to the last one. We'll call printf. You know, ESP will be pointing uh, here. We'll push. Um, we'll push on uh, the address. We'll push on the format specifier. Uh, we'll return. Right, we'll sub ESP. So we'll be pointing at pop A, and then we'll return. And we'll finally move this address, which was for this location here, into ESP and then uh, return. So that'll return back to here. So finally, at the end of all of that, EIP will be pointing at this location, ESP will be back to pointing up here, and our program will terminate. Okay. So um, just to help save time, that I don't know how I exactly would have done it with the way I, I was trying to draw this out uh, to trace through that. If you take that initial sequence of steps, those pushes and pops that adjusted our stack, you know, and you just continue to repeat those, you'll eventually get to a point where we pop this return address where this all started, and then execution will go back to this, you know, into main, and then continue as it normally would, which is pop A. I'm sorry, I keep pointing here. Uh, I meant to be pointing right here. Right, pop A, move zero into EAX, leave and return, which will, which will exit main, which will exit the program, right? So if you just understand this process, it just repeats several times until we finally get back to the point where we pop that return address that gets us to here. Right, that's the that's the important flow to understand. Um, so hopefully this this made sense. Uh, we can look at this function now. So here we have exact same code. Here is that recursive function. Here's done. Here's our return. And let's see, all we need to do is run it. And what you'll see, when you run it is that we have the same address, right? 8048503, 8048503, 8048503, and then finally 80484E3, right? What was the last thing that we popped when we printed? Well, that was the return address back to what would become this pop A, right? The other three were all the same, right? How many times did we push done on? One, two, uh, three, well, four, depending on, uh, but we pushed that on three times, 
in order to, well, four, there you go, sorry, four times. Um, one, two, three, four. And then I'll pop A, one, two, three, four. No, that's not right, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, because that's repeated. Remember, we, we, we referenced that value uh, based off of ESP, moved it there. So one, two, three, four. So we push those addresses on uh, those four times. Those are the return addresses. We're just referencing those as we print. Uh, so does that make sense? Um, but three of them were the same address because we returned to this label done three times before we finally return to that original pop A, right? And so that's what we're seeing with these instruction shares, printing those addresses off. We could look at that in GDB and we won't go through that entire program because that would take another probably 25 minutes to do that. But we can take a look at that in GDB we can set a breakpoint on ASM main and run our program. And now if we disassemble, uh, where we want to get to is the recursive function. So I'll just single step here, print hello, move three into EBX. And now we're ready to call the recursive function. Okay, so we can dump our stack, our, our ESP register, nothing's there. Now we can single step. There's 80484E3, right? Where are we at? Well, we're in the beginning of that function. Push EBX, compare EBX to zero, and then we'll do a call. So let's just step it a little ways in here. Okay, and now we're on our instruction to make that call to recursive function. So if we step into that, we've now made the call. So we should have modified the top of our stack. And you can see there's that address, 8048503. Okay, and we're gonna do that a couple more times, which is why we're gonna to continue to push that value on uh, before we get back to that address that, that gets us into main. So, all right, um, that's all I have for this video. If you have any questions on any of that, if, if this was a little bit confusing, let me know so that we can either work through it individually or I can create another walkthrough or something. We'll continue to work through examples like this. So um, you know, don't be concerned, we will go through more examples. So you'll see this uh, you know, quite a few times here as we go throughout the rest of the course. So with that, that's all I have and I will talk to you guys in the next video.